What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to explain the different draw titans in Attack on Titan, ranging from the present day of the series all the way back to the ancient titans that existed before the series began. For the draw titans that we properly know, I'll be explaining their backstory as well as what makes that titan unique, and for most of the other draws that only have a brief appearance, I'll examine what we know about them if anything, and I'll also give their design a rating out of 10 if I find it interesting. It goes without saying that every draw titan has at least a few things in common regardless of how different their designs may be. For example, they each have an amazing crushing strength which was best displayed when Porco was forced to destroy the Warhammer Titan's crystal. Additionally, they all have claws that can slice through pretty much anything and their small size allows them to be more acrobatic and sneaky when compared to the other titans. Before we get into it, don't forget to sub to the channel for more Attack on Titan videos like this. And if you're an anime only viewer, then later in this video there will be spoilers, but I'll give a big warning before we get to that. Okay, so the first draw titan on this list is Marcel Galliard, who was one of the four warriors chosen to infiltrate Paradise Island. Despite not having much screen time, we still know a lot about Marcel's personality due to the comments made by other people. For starters, we know that he was a confident and reliable leader of the group, as Annie believed the mission wouldn't be successful without him, and Reiner subsequently tried to imitate Marcel's leadership whilst on the island. Marcel was perhaps the physically strongest of his age group, as he came first place in this endurance race, with Porco also singling out Marcel for his strength. We saw in the anime how Marcel was protective over his younger brother, even going as far as to influence Marley to give Reiner the armored titan instead of Porco. He presumably did this to, you know, let his little brother have a long life, which is similar to Falco's desire to protect Gabby from inheriting the titan as well. Marcel's draw titan had a good design, with bulletproof hardened skin covering his entire face, a prominent set of teeth, hardened claws, and a goatee that 12 year old Marcel never had in normal circumstances. We saw this titan in a flashback during Marley's invasion of another country, but sadly he was eaten not too long after that. Moving on, Ymir was the first draw titan that we actually saw in this series, and she undeniably had one of the worst lives of any character. In the beginning, she was a nameless orphan living on the streets of Marley, before she was picked up by this cult leader who gave her a name. He decided to call her Ymir, because Ymir Fritz was the name of the original founding titan, who is a respected historical figure in the eyes of many Eldian restorationists. The man was able to grow his cult by pretending that Ymir had royal blood, and people in this cult began to worship her almost like a god. This was probably the most carefree period of Ymir's life, as she was well fed and was making other people happy just by existing. I'd say the happiest person though was the cult leader, as he was amassing a ton of wealth based off this scam. Things eventually fell apart when the cult was busted by Marlian authorities, with all members being sent to Paradise Island. When the cult was discovered, she tried to play the role of Ymir in the hope that it would save everyone's life, but it was to no effect as they were all turned into pure titans. For 60 years, Ymir would wander Paradise Island as a mindless monster, until one morning she happened to encounter the warriors of Marley. She initially tried to eat Reiner, but Marcel pushed him out of the way and was eaten by Ymir instead. By consuming the spine of a titan shifter, Ymir regained her humanity and became the new draw titan in the process. Unlike her predecessor, Ymir had no hardened skin covering her face and her claws were of a significantly smaller size. Her body proportions were also quite strange, and the teeth specifically, they were not even close to the size of Marcel. That said, Ymir's titan still displayed some great agility throughout the series, swinging from titan to titan in its first appearance, and then later swinging from tree to tree like some kind of monkey. Ymir's draw titan is also capable of speech, which is, you know, that's not a trait that we've seen from other draw titans in the series, so she was definitely special in her own way. The third draw titan on this list is Porco Galliard, who as we already established is the younger brother of Marcel. Porco inherited this titan after Ymir willingly let herself be taken back to Marley, and when we were first introduced to the character, he gets straight into the action by protecting Gabby and Falco from enemy fire. On the battlefield, he's shown to often be a useful asset for Marley, such as when he saved Reiner from being killed, or when he snuck up on Eren from behind and nearly stole the founding titan. On the other hand, he can also be a hothead and blinded by rage, which results in him making short-term and rash decisions that negatively affect the people around him. Porco's draw titan is very similar to his brother's in terms of its design, however, they are not completely identical. Unlike Marcel, Porco's draw titan technically has two sets of teeth, the first is the sharp set on the inside of his mouth, and the second is the hardened skin on the outside that fits together like puzzle pieces. This differs from Marcel, as we can see that he has no jagged teeth on the inside of his mouth, but his exterior teeth are significantly sharper than what Porco's are. With that said, the rest of this video will contain really heavy spoilers regarding the draw titan, so as of posting this video, if you're an anime only watcher, then you definitely need to pause right now. 
once the final season of Attack on Titan is over, then I encourage you to come back to this video and finish it. But uh, until then, don't continue watching. Now, the next Draw Titan on this list is probably the most interesting, as it's essentially a hybrid between the Draw Titan and the Beast Titan. I'm of course referring to the Flying Draw Titan that first appeared in Chapter 129, but before we get into the Titan itself, let's talk about its user. Falco was introduced as a warrior candidate from Mali and is a member of the Grice family. His uncle was one of the leading members of the Eldian Restorationists, alongside Eren's father, and his older brother Colt was the designated successor to inherit the Beast Titan. In the beginning, we saw how Falco's love for Gabi motivated him to try and inherit the Armor Titan, because he believed that if he got it, then Gabi would live a long life. His feelings for her caused him to make major decisions in the series so far, including when he followed her to Paradise Island and jumping to protect her when Niccolo attempted to whack her with a wine bottle. The decision to protect Gabi in that moment is what inadvertently led to Falco inheriting his flying titan, as the wine bottle he was struck with contained Zeke's spinal fluid. Without Zeke's spinal fluid entering his mouth, Falco never would have become what he became, so let's get into what makes his titan so special. To start with, Falco's Jaw Titan possesses two sets of teeth, with the inner mouth looking like a regular Titan, and the outer jaw being a hardened set of jagged teeth. When he closes this outer jaw, you'll notice that he literally looks like he has a beak, which is because the spinal fluid gave Falco's Titan more animalistic features. Both his arms are covered in thick fur, which is obviously reminiscent of Zeke's Beast Titan, and his hands are genuinely just bird claws. These claws were strong enough to crumble the roof of a building on its first appearance, and later in the manga we see that Falco's Titan has evolved even further. These memories of a previous Flying Beast Titan are what made Falco realise that he has the potential to do this himself. When we finally saw him flying, he sprouted a full set of wings with an enormous wingspan. In Chapter 136, Falco performs a manoeuvre in the air where he speeds up to avoid incoming arrows, which I thought was an incredible manoeuvre because this is his first day using the Flying Titan and he's already able to do tricks like this. I guess Marley's warrior training literally prepares you for anything. Considering all factors, this might just be the most useful Draw Titan ever, as he can do everything that a regular Draw Titan can do with the extra benefit of being able to fly through the air. If Falco has a successor in the future, do you guys think that they will also inherit these Beast Titan characteristics? Or is it like, Falco had the Spinal Fluid so it's only reserved for him, but the next person will not have the Beast Titan? It's kind of confusing how this works, but let me know your thoughts on it in the comments down below. Moving on, what we're going to do now is look at some of the ancient Draw Titans throughout history, and I'll be giving some of them a rating out of 10 for their design, because why not? Back in chapter 122, we saw what was possibly the first Draw Titan to ever exist, and I say that because when you look at the whole context of the chapter, it would make total sense for this to be the first one. Its most notable aspect was the fact that its head was just a skull, which is a feature it seemingly inherited from the original founding titan. This draw titan made another appearance in chapter 137, and I imagine its hollow eyes will make it pretty frightening when this eventually gets animated. Based on its design, I'm going to give this draw titan a solid 7 out of 10. The next titan is another one of these ancient shifters, and it has hardened skin covering its face, similar to Porco and Marcel. It has a set of normally shaped teeth inside its mouth, and even though its hands don't have sharp claws, it was still able to slice through the body of the cart titan in one swoop. Around the eye area, it has a unique design with two rectangular sockets, which makes me feel like this was a helmet that was specially designed by Ymir. Whatever the case, this design gets a nearly perfect 9 out of 10 rating from me. In the same chapter, a different Draw Titan was revealed that I think looks kind of similar to Falco. This Draw Titan is what Falco's Draw Titan would have looked like if he never had Zeke's Spinal Fluid. Obviously, I have no evidence to back that up, but I'm just saying, when I look at this thing, I'm like, yeah, Falco definitely would have looked like this if he wasn't a Beast Titan, basically. Let me know what you guys think about that. I mean, obviously, it's just my gut feeling, um, but I'm going to give this design an 8 out of 10. Over here we had another interesting Draw Titan, and I wish we'd seen it more up close because this hardened face is pretty unique. The shape is just so weird that I'm kind of wondering how exactly does it open and close, but I assume that we maybe will get to see that when this is animated. Also, as a random side note, this Draw Titan right next to it is a strong contender for one of the ugliest Titan shifters I have ever seen. Honestly, I kind of feel bad for Mappa having to one day bring this arc to life because there's just a million titans all fighting at once, it's going to be so hard. The final draw titan that I thought was worth talking about is this interesting creature, and I initially was conflicted about whether this was a draw titan or a cart titan or a beast titan, but after a discussion with my boy Oceans, we agreed that its draw seemed to be its defining feature and therefore it is likely a draw titan. 
I'll give this design a 7 out of 10 because the shape of its jaw is unlike anything we've seen before and it kind of makes me wonder does it have better biting power than the other jaw titans? Before I go, I gotta say my favourite jaw titan is probably Falco's, although this guy comes in at a close second place. As always, be sure to drop a like as it does help out the video and the channel and hit that sub button if you haven't already. Until the next one, peace out.